So hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the beginner electrical engineer here, and today we're going to be doing a live stream about some circuit design elements. I should be going for about an hour, and hopefully you will enjoy it, or at least learn something. So this should be a more in-depth look at the um, Circuit Wizard program, which I shall put on screen soon. But Today, well, but first, I just need to get a drink, so please stand by, just like the image says. Hello, sir and madam, thank you for watching. Um, if you'd like to say hi, then please comment. Uh, I'm not forcing you to by any means, but as I said previously, I've got my drink now and I'm pretty much ready to go. So let's get started with Circuit Wizard. So, Circuit Wizard is a spice program. It's I think it stands for simulated pro simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis SPICE. Now let's start by just having a look at some components. So as you can see, we've got our, our 1.5 volt cell, as you'd see from say a AAA battery. Well, it's a AAA cell typically. Um, and we've got our grounds and we've also got zero volts while they're the same and interchangeable sometimes you know you can use them differently sometimes I tend to go for the ground or the earth connection and sometimes I tend to go for the zero volts you've also got a voltage rail which you can change the value of that is a very high voltage it's actually only DC voltage you can get an AC voltage source which you can set the frequency and the RMS voltage value of. You could easily emulate mains voltages. In the UK it's 230 volts at 50 hertz and out of there would come said voltage at said frequency and you could essentially measure it. Now I think I just realized the one person watching might just be me. Now let's have a look at some other, oops, what am I thinking of? That's what I'm thinking of. Let's have a look at perhaps making something. Take a look at our voltage regulators. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch of them, but they're all linear regulators of the 7, 8 and 7, 9 series, which is a bit unfortunate. You know, some of the other ones like the is it LM4080? I think it is. Um, but these are all of the 1 amp and 100 milliamp versions. 100 milliamp versions you're more likely to see on an Arduino um, on an Arduino board, but actually I think they can withstand 500 milliamps. Yeah, doesn't matter. So let's take get rid of these and we'll just simply build a power supply using an AC voltage source of 230 volts, 50 hertz. I should have probably kept that from um, earlier. And we'll bring in a transformer which comes under inductors. And we'll put a fuse on there. Actually, no, we won't put a fuse on there. Because a fuse just makes things blow up when they don't need to because while this is supposed to be a simulation, it's not an exact one-to-one -one comparison of it, unfortunately. So let's take out here and this zero volts trails off. We are going to need a bridge rectifier, which the outputs go like that, or the inputs go like that and the outputs go to the negative and positive um, what am I thinking of? yeah, like on screen basically that should be working as you can see there's about 16 volts on the output and minus 16 volts on the input now that's good enough I suppose um, for a very simple rectifier but I 
I'm going to be... I'm going to put a 7, 8, 1, 5, if they've got one. If they got one on it. Yeah, 1, 5 for 15 amp regulator. So that's so that... Uh, that you can get the full negative voltage rectified for use with op amps, amplifiers in general, audio equipment, things that go into negative voltages. So let's move these capacitors a bit further down a little bit. Um, 100 microfarad should be okay. Um, I do want to turn up this input voltage, so we'll have 12 windings to 1. Just quickly measure what the voltage bit is. Yeah, actually it's gone down, so let's decrease that to 9 windings to 1. Got around 14 amps. 14. Let's put, oops. T1. And let's put 10 back in, because why not? How come it reached 16 a while ago then? Ah, how strange. So let's put in 5 to 1, so I should have essentially doubled the voltage here. No? Oh, it does when I restart it. That makes sense, doesn't it? There is a few problems with... with uh, Circuit Wizard. So... Yeah, about 20 volts and minus 20 volts. That should be fine. So we take our... 7815 uh, and we'll take the 7915 as well. Oops. 7815. Now, linear, re linear regulators like this aren't the best. They'll get very hot if you draw more than an amp from them. Well, actually, if you draw at least 500 milliamps, they start to get warm. And they're not best for uh, precision power supplies either, but. We're just going to roll with it today because we don't have any switch mode power supplies or some of the more precise um, linear rectifi uh, regulators as well. So you just hook up the reference voltages to your zero volts and your, I'm just going to flip this around, arrange, mirror, oops, so that the inputs are both on the same side and the outputs are both on the same side as well. And now if we grab ourselves some more capacitors, for this one I'm just going to use 2.2 uh, microfarads, nice value. Put them both together, connect the middle to the reference and one to each output. We should be able to measure the, out the output voltage and it should be... Uh, I got the, volt, the part numbers wrong. So 7815 and 7915. 7915, there we go. And now we start it up and we have pretty much 15 volts output there and we should have minus 15 volts output there. Now, it, there we go. As you can see, there's a bit of wobble in the center of the reference voltages. There's not an awful lot we can do about that, I suppose. Um, we can have a quick look at the data sheet for the 7805 data sheet. I'll put this up really quickly on the screen in one second. Uh, scene 3, let's create a new scene. Sorry about it going black all of a sudden, but we'll put it up on any second now. Uh, Google Chrome, there we go. Okay, so you should be seeing the data sheet. We'll just go to the Fairchild Semiconductors um, data sheet for this. Just take a look at the insides when we can see a bit something other than a block diagram. If it'll even show us at all, 
do do do. Come on. There we go. It's not gonna load now, is it? Come on. Come on. But we can essentially use the diagrams here to create a uh, constant, well, fixed current and, you know, different regulations and all sorts of interesting things just by looking at the data sheet, especially with this adjustable regulator here. Now, as you can see with this one, which we might try and model today, we've got our power supply with a little up amp which essentially acts as a buffer, well, voltage follower. Um, so you take your output voltage and you set it with a pot. And then the LM417 gives the um, gives the pot a incredibly high impedance and outputs the same voltage so that there's no crazy, uh, crazy feedback caused by feeding the output voltage straight back into the adjustment voltage. And you can exa do exactly the same with the negative um, supply. As you can see here, this is what essentially what we've made with the 7815 and the 7915. We'll add adjustment regulators to that, or adjustments to that in just a minute. And you can actually create switching regulators with it. Wouldn't recommend it because it gets a bit expensive that way. Just buy them off eBay. And let's try and make the um the oops, it's not working now. The adjustable output uh, regulator instead, so let's pause it. So let me just cover what I've basically done. I essentially dragged in a voltage, uh, an op amp, and added the power supplies 20 volts and minus 20 volts, which is the same as the voltage on this wire. And this wire essentially unregulated, but it doesn't really matter for this example. Um, so next we need a resistor or a potentiometer I should say and we will th from now on we'll just use a ground connection or an earth connection same thing really I'll just put one on there so that the um, computer knows that that is actually an earth connection I actually like earth as a as a oops As a um, as a term in engineering, so I believe that was actually wrong. That should be this mirror that first. So that the positive one goes to the what it's reading from the uh, potentiometer. Whoops, and it, the negative loops around to form a negative feedback loop and the output goes to the reference voltage. And we essentially need to do the same with the um, negative rail as well. So we take our output from here. Now I'm not gonna bother flipping everything around because it's just gonna get messy that way, but it essentially works the same way. You'll be, the um, integrated circuit reads a negative voltage here and outputs it back into the reference and we should get a nice smooth enough voltage out. So let's just put some capacitors on the output with some earths uh, just so we can get a good reading. Oops. There we go. And there we go as well. What you want to see. So let's start from the input, which is our main supply. Now, a good design philosophy if you're building mains powered things that are meant for commercial use, especially if it's going to be international, is to have a centre tapped primary, i.e. a tap coming out of the centre, so that you can either have your 230 volts come in to the 
the top and bottom taps of the transformer or if you've got the 110 I think it is from the from US power supplies or from US mains you connect it to the bottom and the center tap in that so that way your essentially is still getting the full uh, 300 230 volts output um, but only using half of the transformer so it essentially compensates for the reduced voltage and the rest of the circuit should still work fine as long as you have them in the right place. Obviously if you were to put 230 volts on the center tap and the bottom um, of the primary coil then you would essentially double the voltage on the rest of the circuit and most likely destroy everything that you've worked so hard to do. So when you're designing a circuit take, keep that in mind especially if it's supposed to be for custom customers to plug it in and run it themselves because they may make that mistake a lot. So transformer, very simple, takes your 230 volts, puts out about 20 RMS, well above 20 at this point, but goes through the bridge rectifier which reduces it by 1.7 volts peak to peak due to having two diodes in series per cycle or per half of the cycle. Um, and the center tap goes through ground, or goes goes uh, is your reference voltage. In this case, is your zero volts, so that one half of the secondary is always positive and the other half is negative. Obviously, it's flipped here, but it doesn't really matter when when you're still dealing with AC because the voltages change into positive and negative anyway. So. What I did here was just ground it mostly for the simulation's sake because it doesn't know that this bit is zero volts. It, it sees it as floating, so I put ground in there just to make sure that each time we use ground later on it is still referring to this zero volts here. Now you can actually ground your power supply like that in real life. I've done it before and it works fine. Um, just be aware that you can't flip the output stages over and essentially get negative voltages that way because it's referenced to ground and you would essentially have another positive voltage and it just gets a bit messy so I wouldn't suggest um, flipping the output terminals around if you've earthed the supply. If you haven't earthed the, uh, earthed the supply then that's perfectly fine and you should be able to flip them around like you would a battery. So we've essentially got just a few smoothing capacitors coming, uh, filtering the output of the bridge rectifier. Um, please note the orientation of these because these are electrolytic ones that are polarized with a positive and negative side. When you're, when you're smoothing out the positive voltage, not the positive side of your power supply, then the positive needs to go to the positive side of the capacitor needs to go to the positive voltage and the negative side of the capacitor goes to your reference voltage or your zero volts but with the negative side your positive goes to the reference voltage your zero volts and the negative side goes to your negative voltage now that's a little confusing it, it confused me at first but um, think of it as the, po the positive side always goes to the higher voltage of the two voltages including your zero volts, zero volts is technically still a voltage. Um, linear regulators, nice and simple, um, takes in your 20 volts, puts out clean 15, Ref that is when the reference voltage is connected to your zero or to your earth, um, but you should have a capacitive load right next to the um, linear regulator just to stabilize it a little bit. Um, it, it does actually say in the in data sheets that they need to be within a certain distance, normally about 20 centimeters, which is normally more than enough if you're making it on a PCB. Um, same goes with a negative. Again, just be aware of the capacitor orientation. That one is wrong. So I'll flip that around real quick. And there we go. Um, let's talk about the op amp and the adjustment potentiometer. So output voltage comes through here, goes through earth, you want a reasonably high value of your potentiometer to 
essentially increase the impedance and get more oomph out of your power supply. Because the, the more current that goes through here, the less can go through the rest of the circuit or the load that you're testing. Now, the wiper of the potentiometer goes straight into a op-amp buffer or voltage follower as it's also known where there's a negative feedback loop without any resistors or added components um, that essentially duplicates the voltage here at this point here and that's just fed back into the reference um, pin of the linear regulator so that the output changes in accordance to the position of the potentiometer. So bear in mind when powering your um, op-amp that it should cover positive and negative voltages if you've got a dual supply like we're designing here. If you're de designing a single supply then by all means just use zero volts and your upper unregulated voltage here. Um, same with the negative side, this, this essentially works all the same just with negative voltages, hence why you need the negative um, the negative power supply on your up amp, else you'll end up with a uh, you'll end up with a saturated up amp and that's something that you don't want. Now your output is essentially here, I'd still have the um, capacitor there just to smooth it out. In if I was drawing this properly, I would have put it closer to the seven eight fifteen or the and the seven nine fifteen, both the linear regulators, just to um, emphasize that closeness between the capacitor and the regulator. Again, now what I'd also suggest doing is getting some big diodes. If you're in England, I'd use the 74001, I think. Yeah, 740123 or 4, just for the amps, i.e. 1 amp, 2 amp, 3 amp, 4 amp. But I would go 7017, wait, 7? 1N4001 diodes. If you're America, you, in America, you can find equivalent diodes quite easily. Um, and you essentially just connect them in reverse bias so that if there's any voltage spike, say from an inductive load, um, your devices or your circuitry should all be protected as uh, any back EMF just gets, well, handled nicely, let's say, from the diodes that you've put in reverse bias. So, uh, that's essentially it for a power supply. Um, please be aware that if you try and build one like this, that this whole transformer setup at the start you will have to build yourself, which means finding a transformer from somewhere that is center tapped on the secondary with um, a high enough output voltage around about 22-ish volts. Um, on the secondary side, now that can be a bit of a challenge and I've yet to find one but I haven't really been looking. You could essentially try and make one yourself but transformers can be a bit difficult to make especially with that volt, that, um, that ratio there and the center tap as well. The center tap can make things a bit more ugly. Um, Another thing to bear in mind is the power of um, the power supply is determined by the uh, transformer, the amount of turns per um, stage or per side of the transformer indicates the maximum current it can handle, same with the thickness of the wire. Um, the bridge rectifier is also another point of failure, you, you don't want to use tiny little diodes if you're going to be drawing more than an amp, well more than their rated current maximum. Uh, capacitors are typically fine, just be aware of the voltages. Um, the regulators again, especially if you're using linear regulators, be aware of the 
maximum current output and the maximum junction temperature, so you will need heat sinks on them, which I don't have a symbol for. Um, and other than that, just be very careful about your component choices, but you should, should still be doing fine. Um, yeah, there's not much else to it. Just keep it nice and simple, nice and neat. Output positive and output, out, output negative. Wizard didn't do a very good job at simulating this today. I mean, it does a great job with digital components, not so much with analog like most of this is here. Um, but I have been able to do essentially giant digital um, digital logic circuits using all of these gates. Now, let's see if I can find some show you the list. So let's take the 7400 series and as you can see there is essentially a lot of them. It doesn't have the full 7400 series here but it's got most of the ones that you'll ever need for a hobbyist or a beginner engineer like myself, hence the name. Um, same with the 4000 series, I actually prefer the 4000 MOSFET series or the FET series. But um, <clears throat> That's just me, I suppose. Uh, it does have a few other integrated circuits, 555 and 556, which is a dual version of the 555. I have a few of those in real life as well. Drivers, you got your Darlington Array, your half H driver for driving motors. That's actually the L293D. I, th I don't know if there's any equivalence to that. You c you've got your um, LM3914 and the logarithmic and decibel versions as well. Um, but I, in the simulation I prefer to use op amps purely because, well, this chip is a bit convoluted due to it being kind of specialist. Um, you do get memory devices like EEPROM with, uh, I, I believe it might be 4 wire interface. Yeah, because you've got your address select. It's actually not for wire interface, but um, there is some microcontroller bits on here, I believe. There's uh, not in this, not in these settings, but there is a genie, I think. Hence why there's a whole program bit here. But genie's kind of like uh, Arduino, but worse, in my opinion. I mean, I've tried pick programming, I've used. Um, Oh, what was it called? Mpasm, which was a bare bones um, assembly language, not like C at all. Um, it was actually a lot more forgiving than C is, but there was a lot of limitations with it, and you had to know exactly what you were doing, else you wouldn't really get anything to work. Um, Genie kind of simplifies that. I believe it's a bit closer to C, similar to an Arduino, or Arduino's variant of C, but I've never used it and I wouldn't recommend using it either, especially since it's PIC and what well, well PIC do rival the AppMega microcontrollers pretty well, they aren't really good enough to, uh, to overcome the benefits of using an Arduino. Now, um, let's take a look, yeah you've got your generic dual inline uh, chips here, so in case you wanted to make something that had four pins but you didn't have the exact one here, then you could at least put it in your circuit, label it up, connect all the connections as you would uh, any other chip, and essentially save it this way. Now as far as I'm aware there's no export feature, I mean there is a print but you need to set up printers and things, and truth be told that doesn't work all too well. Um, so what I tend to do is just print screen it and save it that way as a JPEG, PNG, that kind of thing. Um, on my Twitter I've also done something very similar, but there are loads of options for um, simulation like explosions bounce, as in switch bounce, 
Slow motion, I have never used that myself. And back EMF, which is when you stop a motor and the voltage spikes up because of the inductance of each coil. And as you can see, there's varieties of motors, relays as well, which actually work. Um, but most of the time, this is for low current um, applications. You can't really design anything high current or, well, you can design high precision, I suppose. Um, tolerances aren't here, so to speak. Um, as in, if you say something is 10k, then it is exactly 10k. Um, other than that, I'd say Circuit Wizard is pretty good. Uh, it does everything I need to do. There are some audio things, um, but I don't want to deafen myself because they are kind of loud. Obviously, you could turn it down, but I am one for that. But yeah, everything does work. It's emulated pretty well. Well, simulated, I suppose. It's not emulated. Um, and I often use this for prototyping uh, before I go on and actually do anything. Uh, you've got your MOSFETs, your JFETs, and your MBNs, PMPs. Diodes, Cena diodes, thyristors, thy 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 bridge rectifiers. It doesn't have every single thing. There's a few interesting things in sensors like ultrasonic rangefinders and photo transistors, opto isolators. They all do work um, with their correct outputs. I have no clue what I button is. I suppose that's where you press and hold it, but I've never used it. You can do use crystals and real time clocks and things. Um, as you can see, there's I squared C um, interfaces here, which is cool, but they'd only really work with uh, with your microcontroller, which you can't really implement here. Um, I'm getting tired. It's only half past ten. And you can get, you know, all your connectors that you'd ever need. Plenty of different types of switches. Unfortunately, there's no rotary switch, but there is keypads, which is nice and uh, useful, I suppose. Let's get rid of that. Read switches as well. And you can label, you can even draw on top your, oops, draw on top yourself. Um, using some of the other tools like I believe it's under draw and you can draw lines, rectangles, circles, arcs, all of that all of that nice goodness but again I'd rather just use paint or any other tool like that because they have a bit more flexibility I think I need a nap Ooh. blimey and yeah, there are a few other options that like you can design said circuits on PCB with, or even on a breadboard. And you can connect all the pins together and all of that, but I never use that myself. Let's get rid of that. Delete. Um, but you can get all your components, all your inline sockets, capacitors, uh, NPNs, 4000 series, all of the goodies. You could even get different LED sizes and they are literally different sizes like the 3mm ones are actually smaller than the 5mm ones and they indicate the flat edge as well that you need. Um, I don't believe there's an option to buy these circuit boards that you design but I believe you might be able to export them somehow. I'm not entirely sure. I've never tried it myself. Uh, I normally rely on Easy EDA for that, but again, I'm no good at that. You can also use program uh, flowcharts for Genie, and you can do sum ups of 
LEDs and all your components based on the PCB layout. Um, but that goes into changing all of these values and I'd rather just do it on a spreadsheet again because, well, it's easier, you know? So, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone else, I might call it here today. We've been going for a good 45 minutes now, and I've certainly enjoyed my time telling you how to do this. And since it's only me who watched the live stream, I'm going to edit this and make a video of it myself. So thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. It's the beginner electrical engineer here. I hope you learned something useful today, and I shall see you in the next video or live stream. Goodbye.